Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for being with us here today. We thank you that, that your presence is among us. And we thank you that you allow us to be in your presence. We ask now that you would send your Holy Spirit to each of us so that we may more closely come to you, draw us to you, Lord, in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, the, uh, we are in this light sermon series here. And uh, the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about light, created light, and true light. And uh, this week, we're going to talk about glimpses of light, how we might see that light, the created light and the true light. And, and that might sound exciting. It would be really kind of cool to see the light of Jesus, that true light, or, or the, the God who created light. But it might also be a little scary. Let's first of all look at a couple of examples who had glimpses of God's light. First of all, Moses in, chapter, in Exodus chapter 3. And God said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face and was afraid to look at God. It wasn't all that exciting for Moses. It may, maybe it was exciting, but it wasn't all that comforting. He was afraid, and he hid his face. Let's take a look at another. Let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 1. And this is Ezekiel's vision. And upward from what, he, what had the appearance of his waist, I saw, as it were, gleaming metal like the appearance of fire enclosed all around. And downward from what had the appearance of his waist, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire, and there was brightness around him. Like the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud on the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness all around. Such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God. And when I saw it, I fell on my face, and I heard the voice of one speaking. That doesn't sound so much like a vision of God, but of, of more of almost a vision of Satan. Brightness and fire, it sounds scary. And, and he, Ezekiel was just thrown to the ground. He fell on his face. Moses hid his face and was afraid, and, and Ezekiel falls on his face. But maybe it's just an Old Testament thing. Let's take a look at our gospel from today. Matthew chapter 17, he, Peter, was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. Okay, so it's not just an Old Testament thing. These, these disciples who had been with Jesus for three years, lived with him, walked with him, saw him do miracles, when they were at this moment of transfiguration, they saw Jesus and they fell on their faces and were terrified. From our first reading in Acts chapter 9, And as Saul went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? A light that literally knocks Saul off of his horse. And, and hopefully we understand that, that this Saul that we're talking about is Saul who converted, uh, was converted in this moment, and then his name was later changed to Paul, the Apostle Paul. Jesus' light shone on, on Saul at the moment, and it put him to the ground. Why is it that people get a glimpse of the light of God and they are afraid and they hide their faces and they fall on their faces and it knocks them to the ground and, and they just don't know what to do? I think we find the answer when we go back to Moses in chapter 33. But God said, you cannot see my face for man shall not see me and live. Moses fell on his face. Saul, Ezekiel, the disciples, 
God is such a bright and brilliant God that we cannot see him. It's kind of like, if you will, looking at the sun. Only not the sun from 93 million miles away, which it is, okay? But the sun up close. Like if you were up close and personal with the sun, what would happen to you? Yeah, you would melt. You would be destroyed, right? You would not survive. This God that we're talking about built the sun. He created the sun. God is brighter than the brightness of the sun. If the sun is going to destroy us, when we come into God's presence, God's presence, his brightness, that light would destroy us. We cannot come into God's presence because we are filled with the darkness of our sin. Let's go back to the disciples once again in Matthew chapter 17. And Jesus was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. This is the Jesus. The, the disciples get just a glimpse of who Jesus is, his light and his glory. They, they see just a moment of it, and they fall on their faces. This is the true light, but the, the part of the creating uh, entity of light itself. And the disciples can't handle it. They fall on their faces. This sin that darkens our lives is the very reason Jesus came to the earth. He came to bring us light and to bring us hope and to destroy the darkness of our sin. Jesus came to the earth as a baby in a manger so that, that when he grew into a man, he could hang on a cross and destroy our sin so that we could be in his presence. Darkness of our sin separates us from God. And if we were to go into God's presence in our sinful state, it would be like running into the sun. We would be destroyed. We cannot handle it. And yet, God tells us to look for his light, to seek him, to understand him. In Psalm 4, there are many who say, who will show us some good? Lift up the light of your face upon us, O Lord. We've got to understand that all things good come from God, and he might give us just a little glimpse of, of the light, his light, like light through the trees in the woods. If we were to be out in his full bore light, our sin would destroy us. God promises to give us light and to look for that light of his face. Solomon, in his prayer of dedication, and as I was, I'm preparing a number of uh, messages all at the same time, I, I mentioned this the other day, but, uh, but I'm going to use this prayer of, of uh, dedication for the temple when the temple was built in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. God says, we've got to turn. We were in this reset sermon series. We've got to turn from doing this to doing that. And, and as you turn, seek my face. Look for the light that I will shine on you. Because I've got good to give to you. I've got good to give to you in, in all your days, but the best thing I've got to give to you is the light of my son, Jesus Christ, to come to the earth. It's a light that he's, he's wanting to share with you, to 
overwhelm you in your life, to have it reflect in your life. David writes in Psalm 27, Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, Seek my face. My heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger, O you who have been my help. Cast me not off. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. This, I, I want to, uh, Rosemary, if you would, would you go back to verse 8 here for just a moment, if you can. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be, uh, yes, you have said, you have said, seek, that's it, exactly. You have said, seek my face. And I want you to understand this, this seek my face is not just a, a singular command. It's not just a, a command to King David, it's a plural command. All y'all seek my face. Everyone seek my face. God created us, designed us to seek his face, to see the light of his glory, the light of his love. It's not just for, for those of us who sit in here. God calls all of humanity to seek his face. In Micah chapter 7, Rejoice not over me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Until he pleads my cause and executes judgment for me, he will bring me out to the light. I shall look upon his vindication. God brings his light into our world the light of his salvation, the light of Christ, and it shines in us, and it shines through us, and it shines from us. You see, when, when God's light hits us, the world should notice. King Belshazzar of Babylon, when there was the the uh, notorious writing on the wall, was looking for someone that he could see that light in. And in Daniel chapter 5, he calls Daniel and he says, I have heard of you that the spirit of the gods is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. God, when he shines his light on us, he gives us light and understanding and excellent wisdom. King Belshazzar was, was afraid and didn't know what to do, and he was looking for someone who could shed light on his problem. The world around us is dark, and they are looking for someone to shed light. We are called to be that light to the world. Moses is probably the best example of reflecting God's light physically. In Exodus chapter 34, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When we hang out with God, does our face shine like someone who has been changed? God moves in our lives and he shines his light on us. We are to be reflectors of that light. Once again, King David writes in Psalm 36, How precious is your steadfast love, O God! The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. In God's light, we see light. And without God's light, there is nothing to see. We talked about that in creation. He gave us light to make sense of all of creation. But in his light of love and hope and salvation, everything makes more sense. 
doesn't make sense to our world that a God would come down in, in human form and, and be born of a baby and then later, or be born a baby and then later die for our sins. Our world is dark. God wants to shine the light to all humanity. You and I are called to be that reflection of God's light. Let me, let me wrap this up. As, as someone came into the church today and, and they came in and they said, you know, I just, I got to tell you this story. I, I just went to get, um, get, get my coffee, my usual coffee. And I, I, I came and uh, I, I got my coffee and I said to the girl who normally helps me, um, you know, Merry Christmas. And the girl who had helped said, I don't do Christmas. The world is so terrible, Christmas is just a downer. I don't do Christmas, and I don't ask my family to do Christmas. We live in a dark world, a world that sees no hope, a world that can't even recognize that there is light and love in the message of Christmas. Christmas is, is not a downer. Christmas is not a, 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 a time to be sad. But Christmas is a time when you and I have the opportunity to reflect the light of Jesus more powerfully than at any other time. The world is dark. Our sin is dark. But God wants give you just a glimpse of his light and his glory. And he wants you to provide that glimpse of light and hope to the world around you. Maybe someone this Christmas needs a little light, a glimpse of God's light from you. I pray that, that we can be good reflectors of Jesus this Christmas season. In a dark world, we may be the only light and hope that they see. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing light into our lives and bringing hope and love and salvation and forgiveness and, and all those wonderful things. We pray for our world that, that you would allow us, like Moses, to, to irradiate your light um, uh, when we walk in the world so that the world would, would get just a glimpse of the light of your love and hope for them. Guide us in your love and through your light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we will continue with our offering.